Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Back again with another kit review for you. And this is a kit I mentioned the other day, I think I did it in my monthly roundup, I mentioned it in there. A uh, kit I've ordered from China, it's come today. Um, and so I'm really, really pleased to get my hands on it. It's a kit that I never thought would be made. I never thought anyone would do it in 35th scale, but Trumpeter have come, come along and done it for us. I remember there was rumour of it last year, but I never thought it would come to fruition. But here it is. And it is the Topol M. Uh, Topol M ICBM. Um, and this is a subject that probably at the moment is perhaps a little sensitive with all that's going on and the threat of this, that and the other. But let's forget that for a minute. This is a plastic model of a military vehicle and um, it's a military vehicle that I happen to love the look of. In fact, I'm not ashamed to say I do. I am a fan of the look of Russian armour. I like Russian aircraft. Uh, I just like the kind of back to basics. It's almost like, you know, it, it's like almost like old technology when you look at it. I know it's not inside, but when you look at it, it's, um, it looks like old technology. And like the aircraft, you know, whereas the RAF and the American Air Force and everything, they, they tend to, you know, colour any scratches in or get rid of any marks. And But the Russians just leave it. You know, I've seen pictures of Su-27s where there's, there's hardly any paint left on the side of the the, the fuselage where the ladder's been up against it and the pilot's got in and out and rubbed his feet on it and stuff and it's just shiny bare aluminium you know it's, it's um it's it's just them it's what they do and they don't storm in hangars and stuff they're left outside and as we know the weather over there can be uh quite awful in the winter but uh yeah i just i, I i'm a fan of the look of russian armor i'm not a fan of what's going on at all obviously um i think it's awful but uh I will just start as well with a caveat with this video. Um, as most of you will know, my comments on my videos are always held for review. So I look at them before I actually, you know, post them for the world to see. And, you know, if any comments appear on this video regarding the war in Ukraine or Putin or whatever, um, I'm just going to delete them because it's, it's, this isn't about that. This is about a model kit that I've been waiting for. A lot of you will know I did the 172nd scale build back, I don't know, two years ago and it fell off the shelf, it was behind me, that was the SS25 sickle, this is actually the SS27 sickle, so it's uh, it's bigger. Um, so yeah, it's just a vehicle that I'm, 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 I'm a fan of, I love all the Maz stuff, all the big Maz heavy trucks and I've got a few kits of different shapes and sizes, so um when I saw this, I thought, yeah, I've got to get that. So this is a kit I've wanted. It's a kit I'm going to build. I probably won't build it on video, but it's a kit I want to, I want to build and, you know, get on the shelf. So um, without further ado, let's get to the bench. I'll tell you a little bit about it and about the real thing that I've got from the internet. It's not really a hell of a lot of information about. And, uh, and we'll go from there and we'll have a look in the box. I haven't looked inside the box. Um, oh, one thing I did want to say, I bought this on eBay from Dawn Grocery Store. In China um, I've used them before I couldn't find it for sale in a, in a UK retailer um, that's advertising online so I just bought it from over there scale model shop have it the retail price I think is 250 quid scale model shop have it out of stock but they have it listed at 233 um, I got this for 186 all in delivered so I normally like to, to support our local shops you know lo local businesses but um, in this case, I wasn't able to do so. And I think given the choice of paying 250 or 180, I think I know which one I'd go for. Only downside to that is, of course, the box has got a little bit damaged. You can see on the side there, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit squashed. It's a bit squashed on that end. But that's, you know, that's the price you pay. Um, I've, as I said, I bought a few kits from Dawn Grocery Store. Never had one where the kit has actually been damaged. Um, I even, I think I bought my Meng um Pantsir truck from Dawn Grocery Store and that even had a hole through the box but the kit still wasn't damaged so uh good stuff I've, I've still got that kit now one built and the box has got two holes in the front of it so uh anyway enough waffling we'll get to we'll get to the bench we'll talk about the real thing and we'll see what this thing's made of I haven't looked inside the box as I say so I've seen a couple of reviews on YouTube but there's nothing out there in English that I know of um that I've seen so um let's have a look Okay, so here we go at the bench and I've got the box on an angle so I don't get the light reflecting off it and everything. A lot of you have suggested me getting filters to stop the reflection. Problem is I have a ZV-1 camera I use, a Sony ZV-1, ZV-1, and um, 
you can get the stick on type filters but the trouble is the camera is obviously horizontal facing downwards over my bench and apparently the actual lens focusing mechanism is quite fragile so I don't want to go and add weight to it so that's why I'm not doing any of that so we've got the box on an angle it stops most of the light reflected so what we've got here is a great big box there's a bit of red tape there um, we've got a great big box and it's a 15U 175 Tel of RS 12 M1 Topol M ICBM complex there's a mouthful um, Topol is the Russian name given to the uh, to the actual missile itself um, and it stands for Whereas a white poplar, so as we all know, poplar trees stand very vertical and very parallel. So I guess that's what they're calling it, white poplar, although it's not white. So I don't know, maybe the actual missile itself is white. Um, as I say, I got this kit from um, from Dawn Grocery Store store on uh, on eBay, and it actually gave a delivery date of between December the twentieth and January the twelfth or something. Um, I ordered it on the 25th of October and it arrived today, November the 8th. So, you know, we, we do start to see now with, especially from China, the delivery dates of kits are very, very far into the future. I don't know if it's done to cover themselves or because they choose a cheap postage and the postage is much faster than, than they say or whatever. But basically, this is the model. That is the vehicle there. 18 wheels, sorry, 16 wheels. It's probably got a spare somewhere. 16 wheels, great big V12 engine, huge chassis, huge cabs, massive missile. You don't actually get the missile in the kit, that I do know. You only get the outer tubing. So um, if you wanted to show, you know, with the diorama with it being launched with the smoke around it and stuff, you're going to have to get an aftermarket or a scratch builder missile, which I should imagine wouldn't be too difficult. There's lots and lots of videos on YouTube about these missiles, so um, you can see what they look like. Um, so basically the kit is 638.2 uh, millimeters long, it's 115.5 millimeters wide, and it's got 1100 plus parts. I don't know why they do that. They, why don't they just say it's got 1159 parts? Why do they say 1100 plus? You know, that could be 1101, or it could be 3 million, couldn't it? You know, um, but basically it gives us an idea of what's in there. It says on the bottom here, detailed scale kit for adult collectors to assemble. Actual model may vary from image on box. Warning, not for children under three years. No shit, Sherlock. Um, please keep this packaging since it may contain, because it contains important information. Um, so, yeah, keep the box. So, basically, um, this has the NATO name of SS27 Sickle. Uh, I want to say a massive thank you to Michael. Michael Naven, when I originally mentioned getting this, um, Michael Naven said that it's actually got 14 wheels, not 16. There's seven axles. And I said, no, no, it's definitely got eight axles. And he said, well, the 72nd scale I built got seven axles. And I looked into it, and sure enough, that is a smaller missile. It's a smaller truck. And this is actually the Maz 79221 TEL, which is transporter, here you go, transporter, erector, launcher. Um, and the actual SS25 Sickle, which is the 72nd scale Zvezda slash Revell kit that I built before, is actually on a Maz 7917. So it's got seven axles. So thank you, Michael. I would have gone on thinking that mach that machine had eight axles. No problem. So thank you for that. Uh, so it, it's actually, it's 22.7 metres long. The, the uh, missile this is. It's 1.9 millimetres in diameter and it weighs 47,200 kilograms with the warhead. It can go a minimum distance of 2,000 kilometres and a maximum distance of 10,500 kilometres and it travels at a speed of 7,320 metres per second. Yeah, 7,320 metres per second. That's going some. There are currently... Uh, well, in 2010, there were 18 in service with a total of 70. So they had obviously another 52 um, you know, launch, on, on, launched in, uh, in, in ground, in the ground. I can't think of what they're called now. And then the um, 18 of them are mobile. And they reckon the life is around 15 to 20 years. So I would imagine that most of what they've got, if they had 18 in service in 2010... You know, and you can imagine they probably don't take five minutes to build. Probably half of those are now gone. 
but they've actually replaced it with something else, haven't they? I can't think of the name of the name right now, but there's a there's a newer version of the same thing. So don't worry, they'll they'll keep up. You know, <laughs> great, isn't it? Uh, it's powered by a twenty five liter eight hundred horsepower engine. Um, so it's a smaller engine than the 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 Maz five four three like you get in the Scud. Uh, they have a thirty eight liter engine, but they're only five hundred twenty five horsepower. That's all. Uh, but this one's got eight hundred horsepower. So. I did see somewhere, it doesn't say it on the box like a lot of people do, like it's an area do. This should have in here 100% new tooling because you couldn't be, you know, accused of being a fool if you thought a lot of this was just sprues taken from all their other kits because they've done the, I've got them all I think, they've done the, the Maz 543 Scud and then you've got the 543 Smirch, which, by the way, the Trumpeter kit, all the rockets are all too big, it's all horrible, get the main one, it's much better. Uh, and then you've got the, I've got them here behind me, you've got the uh, the Rubesh, which is the uh, coastal anti-ship missile with P-15 missiles. You see, now that comes with the launchers, but you also get two of the missiles. And then you've got the Russian 30 N6E flat lid radar system. And then there's the fire truck, you've got the transport truck, the cargo truck. You've got the coastal defence, which is a good looking thing with a great big gun on it. Uh, and then you've got the S300 or S400, I think it's S400, which are all lovely, lovely. And I thought this was just a longer one of them. You could, you know, you, you could be fooled for thinking that. That's not the right term, is it? But um, yeah, I thought it was just a big one of them. It's not. It's actually a completely different vehicle. Different engine, different chassis, different everything. I think it might have the same wheels and tyres. I'm not sure. We'll have a look. But anyway... Let's have a look around the box. I'll stop waffling. So here we've got on the side of the box, we've got CAD images of them all. We've got reflective light as well. So we've got CAD images of all the details. So you can see there we've got the cab uh, and then there's some other bits and pieces going around there. Uh, we've got a CAD image of the actual uh, launcher itself. They're showing you there's a light on the roof. Why? Um, it's showing here all the photo etch parts as well. And then this is the back end of the missile. That's where it tips over and sits on the ground and launches from there. You've got the missile launch tube there and the actual chassis that the launch, the erector that it's sitting on and then these bits and pieces going around the side. Uh, we've also got here some detail of the engine. So this is an all new engine. And then we've got detail of the rear suspension there. And we've got some transfer boxes and stuff and wheels and suspension parts there. I kind of wish companies wouldn't do this. I wish they'd show us the plastic parts instead of this because, you know, this could be absolutely full of sink marks, ejector pin marks, flash, seam lines, you know, we'd see that in a picture, whereas with this, it's always going to look perfect, is it? Because it doesn't have any ejector pin marks or anything. Saying that, Trumpeter are very, very good with ejector pin marks on their newer kits. They are very good indeed. I will say one thing for Trumpeter, they do listen to the modelling community. They really do, in my opinion. So there's a couple of versions there. We've got A, B and C. So we've got the green there. We've got the green there, and then we've got the tricolour <laughs> camouflage there. So this one looks like an in-service vehicle because it has, just has nothing on it, just the star. And there's a, a battalion or whatever there. This one is going to be a parade because it's got the parade stripes down the side. And then this one is going to be your um, tricolour thing. Another complaint I've got with Trumpeter, they used to do it, but they don't anymore. They don't tell you what they are. Like if you look at the Airfix... Um, the little Airfix KT ambulance, it gives the actual group it was with, where it was, the date it was, everything. This gives you nothing. It's just green, green and tricolour. Nothing in there at all. So here you can see a display of the actual deco sheet you get with the kit. We've got four sheets of PA, we've got two of those and two of those, so that's, that's nice. Uh, it's saying over here the product is not a toy. And then we've got there is the kit number 01082. So, popping the lid off the box. It is a big box. I can tell you now, it is 22, it's about two foot long and it's about 14 inches tall. Okay, and it's a good four inches deep. So here we can see we've got inside the box. This is the usual uh, trumpeter hobby boss way of telling you what you've just bought. So you can see on there, if I hold it close up, you can see all the detail on there. Maybe you could scan that on your phone and it will work. I don't know. Um, you can see all the different detail there, separately moulded fueling pipes, 
and uh, it does look really really nice there's some actual information there about the the um, the machine itself so you can see that on there so uh, kick rises of 1148 parts there we go why couldn't I say that on the box um, on 27 sprues 99 parts of photo etched and 16 tires and some copper tubing we've also got die cut masks as well so there we go and then over the page another couple of kits here we have a, a ooh, nice 16th scale Jagd Panther as you can see with all the interior detail everything that's going to be really nice and big and probably quite expensive and here's the other end of the scale we've got a 72nd scale Soviet object 268 so that one's going to be like that and that one's going to be like that so there we are and then here is a correction obviously they've made an instruction error so um, there's a correction sheet there for the instructions so as we can see here the it's been it's come a long way from China the bags have all been rattling around all these little screws and rivets all down the chassis have all been pressing into the cardboard lid and everything not sure if there's any there's no real damage in here so everything should be good I mean trumpeter and their packaging is normally faultless but um you know when you start to get something this size maybe they could have put another sheet of cardboard in there but I don't think anything's damaged or broken anyway and if it is it's you know it's it's all sort of well hidden under the vehicle anyway so we've got a, a large sprue there we've got another large sprue there with the frame for the missile and everything and then typical I'm just going to show you the box because it's always an important part of trumpeters um, boxes look at that absolutely wonderful that could rattle around in transit it's not going to come to any harm you've got a box there with parts and the tires and everything and then we've got another box over here with parts in and they've got the cardboard carrying on up there so it stops these parts from rattling across and moving into there because if that moved into there that would sit on top and then as soon as you put some weight on top it it would break so very very thoughtful packaging thank you trumpeter um you know they are always always very good and without me looking in i'll bet there's going to be bubble wrap wrapped around parts i'll bet there's going to be foam wrapped around parts i bet we'll have all sorts of great stuff so i'm going to get this box out of the way um, it already said we got it said we got 27 sprues didn't it so i don't need to count them <clears throat> yeah 27 sprues so it's not your starter kit um and it's not a beginner's kit either but it's going to be a kit if you enjoy, if you like your russian military stuff i think this is something you'll love this would be the centerpiece of any display stand um, maybe there'll be one at Telfer this year, so maybe maybe not. So anyway, um, <clears throat> without further ado, I'm going to get the box moved out of the way, and then we'll show you what's in the bags. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, this kit then. And I'm going to start with the sprues. Normally in my reviews, I would start with the instructions, but the instructions are at the bottom of the box. And as you've just seen, there's a lot to get through to get down there. So I'm going to um, just start with the sprues, and then we'll look at the instructions last. So here we have the, the main sprue. I'm guessing this is sprue A. Yes, it is. It's sprue A. And you can see here we've got our main chassis rails. I'm going to get this out of the bag because it's horrible reflections, isn't it, and everything. So we'll get that end of that bag cut open. And we'll get this out. And there we go. And as you can see, it's huge. This is an A2 cutting mat. So that chassis is... Let's have a look under here. We have a number. Uh, that is... 550 millimeters long that chassis so there we go 55 centimeters long there you are you can see there's a lot on here uh, we've got some bodywork there there's going to be some fenders obviously the main chassis rails we've got a door there we've got the fronts of the um of the two cabs either side we've got the front bumper here there's going to be the main floor of the cab with the seat pedestals on it um, there's some ladders all beautifully molded and as you can see nothing is broken off the sprue it would appear nothing is damaged all of these details on here all feel nice and sharp there is actually one little lug broken off there i can see if you look there is just one lug broken off there right in front of my finger but we're not going to worry about that um everything else seems to be real good so that's all good and um on the back we have ejector pin marks but you see, this is what I was saying about trumpeter. I mean, they've made a part this big, and they've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 ejector pin marks in there. And it looks like they're all hidden underneath something else. So, you know, they've been really, really thoughtful and done that really, really well. So thanks for that, trumpeter. And um, 
Same here, we've got ejector pin marks on the floor, but they're all on the undersides. And I should imagine a lot of this is double skinned. So uh, there's probably another panel to go over the top of that. So we'll have a look when we get to the instructions. We do have ejector pin marks here on the inside of the cabs. I don't know if there's going to be anything to cover them. But as you can see here, like on that door, where the interior detail is, there's a couple of places there for placards, but there's no ejector pin marks. And it's, you know, Trumpeter have come a very long way with stuff like this. So really, really nice to see. And here again, you know, there's parts there, there there's um, outriggers for the, for the mudguards and everything. And the ejector pin marks are on the inside rather than on the outside. So yeah, very, very nice indeed. And I just want to show you something. Like I say, I always thought this was just an extended version of like a Maz 543, which is like your, your common that everyone knows the Scud launcher. But if we look, I've got some parts here. Uh, for instance, here's a front bumper from a Maz 543. Okay, look at that. That's the front bumper of the of this one, and that's the front bumper of the Maz 543. So you can see there's quite a difference in the width. It's a good. Um, if you've got a Maz 543 and you're sizing up your shelves, this is about 11, 12 millimeters wider. So quite a lot bigger. And then we've got the, um, here's the front of the cab. You can see there, you know, quite a difference. Look at the size of the window and everything. You can see it's all a lot bigger and beefier. So very interesting to see that. It's 100% so it's, it's, it's new tool. There are no carry over parts as far as I've seen so uh, very very nice indeed I'll just give you a good close look at that detail on that chassis and stuff you can see all that lovely bolt head detail and everything it's really really nice I might put some pictures up at the end we shall see <clears throat> so moving on to the second sprue this is the second and last big one um, <clears throat> and this is the actual frame for the erector who misses so this is where the actual missile is going to sit on this chassis here. This looks like a, like a conduit that's actually going to run along, along the length of the actual missile itself. And then we've got these bits here, I'm not sure what they are. Uh, and then these bits here, it's all part of the launching system I should imagine. But all very, very big. Um, and all very, very chunky. We've got a hydraulic cylinder out there which is moulded in halves rather than a slide moulded. But hey ho. We've got a platform there. There's some pretty big checker plate, a little gentle, little lovely to scale handle on the end of there. If you look at that, that's very nicely done. But um, all very big, all very nice, all beautifully moulded. And uh, yeah, very nice indeed. There's ejector pin marks on the inside of there. But I'm guessing these are going to be glued down the side of there. So it doesn't matter. Thank you, trumpeter. So that's that taken care of, and then we've got this sprue here. This is sprue. Sprue. Which sprue is this? this is sprue N. N for Nigel's modeling bench, um, and this is obviously on our main. Some of our main boxes down the sides, toolboxes, control panel access, whatever. It's all molded closed. You can see we've got a couple of fans there. Uh, there's probably going to be some photo etch grills to go over them, and then obviously there's going to be photo etch grills to go in here. So we'll have to paint the inside of these black. You can see they're all slide molded in one piece, so they're very, very nicely done. Very, very sharp, crisp detail on there. Really, really lovely, well molded, beautifully done. So yeah, and then we've got more bits and pieces here. Some toolboxes again, slide molded. You can see we've got ridges here. You've got the detail on the front there, and then you've got ridges there on the side. Again here, the same, and then the same here on this one. And then we've got this box here, it looks like a typewriter or something. Not sure what that is, but it's, uh, it's beautifully done. And you can see that all the detail on these sides is, is really, really nice. Very nicely done. And it needs to be all crisp and sharp because the one thing you need with this, if it's going to be a huge green blob, you need to brighten it up with some washes and some filters and, and some, you know, some streaking and stuff like that. So let's have a look in this end box first. So here we have 
a small sprue here. This is um, see they're calling this SS27. Although they do not say SS27 anywhere on the box, on the sprue it is known as SS27. So hopefully there's going to be something else. You can see on the back of here, 135th SS27. So very, very nice indeed. So this is a small sprue with um, slide moulded parts. So we've got hydraulic cylinders here with, with um, the slide moulded. So it's, it's just a case of cleaning up the seam. You haven't got halves to glue together. So again, thoughtful production from Trumpeter. Got a slide moulded box there. So we've got a completely hollow box, but made in one piece rather than having to join up lots of bits of plastic. Uh, there's a something there. I would imagine there is going to be another version of this, whatever it may be. I hope they do the long Korean one, but um, maybe they're going to do SS25. But basically, this looks like it's a lot of special parts for the SS27. Uh, 01082. This kit was 010. Oh, this is, this is 01082. So, um, yeah. Anyway, you can see a lot of tiny little detail parts there. Again, they've enjoyed, avoided ejector pin marks other than that one by having these ejector tabs on there. So, uh, very nice indeed. Beautifully made beautifully molded very nicely done. I'm going to put this back in the box because it looks like that end piece back in the bag looks like that end piece wants to fall off so put that back in the bag I'm going to put this box upside down so otherwise it's going to be a nightmare to get back in we have our clear parts here and oh dear I wasn't going to open them but I am because I've got one broken off the sprue floating around loose so we'll get that off and get some tape on it or something but um we have our clear parts here and they are lovely. I've seen better from Trumpeter. I don't know if I can catch it in the light. There you go. You can see on them, there's almost like a fan where the sprue gate is. It's like a fan in the clear part. But I'm not going to worry about that too much because you know a little bit of dust on them or something will hide that anyway. But they are beautifully flat, beautifully clear, undistorted. You can see they're very flat. Really, really nice. Very, very nicely done. And we've got this one here, which is floating around on his own. And unfortunately, it's broken off the sprue. And this is what I talk about with clear parts. You can see where that's, whoops, you can see where that's broken off. It's taken a chunk of the frame with it. You can see there, there is a tiny little gap in the frame. And that is the problem with clear parts. If you start cutting them too close or tearing them off, the plastic's generally very brittle. So they will, um, you know, you will actually get a, a, a chunk missing. So I tell you, what, I'm going to put these to one side and then I'll deal with them later in the bag on its own. And then we'll deal with that later. That doesn't want to stay anywhere. So we'll put it there in the booth. There we go. Right. Uh, and then here we have the final bag from this box. Let's actually sellotape unusual for trumpeter very unusual bloody sticky tape God. right very sticky tape they've obviously done that again you see this is thoughtful packaging they've wrapped up the end nice and tight so that the parts don't get knocking around and everything so oh, we have got a bag within a bag here so put that to one side so this is going to be our main cab. So there's our main driver's cab, I think. Is it? It's all a bit lopsided. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be or if it's just the way it's gone, but we'll get the ends on. It'll square it all up. You can see here, when we look at that down on the ends, you can see they're all a bit wee. I don't think they're supposed to be like that. I think they've been uh, distorted in the box. But uh, they'll, they'll come back. It's not a, not a problem. And you can see here we've got these boxes. And again, we've got this beautiful rivet detail on the outside of here which is really sharp and really crisp. Catch it in the light. I can't seem to pick it up in the light. There we go, you can see it now. A lovely detail there. Remember these cabs are fiberglass, so don't go doing rusty streaks and stuff on them. And then we've got more access panels there. 
and then the same here, more access panels. We've got the same here for the cab. I never really know what's going on. Is this the missile launching and that's the driving? I, I don't know. Maybe somebody can tell me. Because I know like your Smirch and a lot of them, they just have the driver's cab. Um, and then you'll have somebody sat behind him in the back. But like with the with the Scud, you have the, the, other, the other side as well that also has an instrument panel. But no steering wheel. But then you also have the control unit in the middle of the vehicle. So anybody knows, please tell me. And then basically you've got a lovely detail there on that door. See that lovely door there with the hinge detail and everything on it. Very, very nicely done. And all the lovely rivet detail and bolt detail on there. Really, really crisp. Very, very sharp. That one's for there. And then this one. Oh, actually, that one there is actually sellotaped to that bag. A bit unusual. But, uh, obviously, I want to pack it up the same as it was, but I don't need to worry about transit because this ain't going nowhere. So, more tape. They've really gone to town with the tape here. I reckon in the factory they said, we've, we've made some new tape. Can you try this tape out, please? See what it's like. I would turn the camera off, but it means an extra step of editing. So that bag was tape close. How unusual is that for Trumpeter? Right, so here you can see we have more side panels. There's going to be a lot of these, more access panels. We're down the sides with all that lovely crisp engraved detail and raised detail as well. Beautifully done. Really, really sharp. And here we've got a bit of foam, which again is something I love with Trumpeter. They do this all the time, protect the parts. So what's this protecting? It's going to be something really fine and detailed, I expect. Look at that. It's that little... That little tiny loop sticking out of there, they've got all that foam round to protect that. So thank you very much for that trumpeter. I will put that back on before I put it back in the box because that will eventually get broken, won't it? So that's, the, um, that's that end box taken care of. We then have a load of sprues in the middle. So here we have, this is going to be our rings around our missile. And our missile um, tube, launch tube. So you get an idea of how big it's going to be. Bit of a seam line on there to clean up around the inside of there, but hey ho, it's nothing, it's modelling, isn't it? But um, again, nicely done. If you notice, there's no parts broken off the sprues other than that clear part, which is a problem with clear parts because if you have more than one sprue connector, you get spidering. If you have one sprue connector, they easily get broken off. So you pay your money, it takes your choice. But um, there we go. So that's the that's the back end of the missile. By the look at that's the slot goes flat down on the bed and allows the missile to launch. If you haven't seen it, um, go and have a look at some of the way these things work. Some of these launchers, they're um, they're quite amazing. They have like a small charge that they sort of you know up out of the tube, and they almost seem to stop, and then poof, the main motor starts and they go. It's incredible to see because they just have this small charge just to get them out of the tube and then the main motor starts up and they go. I think they call it a dry launch or a cold launch. Um, but it's incredible to watch. Not very nice to be on the other end of it, but um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it is what it is. But it's very, very nicely moulded indeed. You can see we've got some lovely crisp sharp lines on all that. So really beautifully done. And then here we have another, being careful I don't go boring you with multiple sprues, but I don't think there are many in here. So this is uh, sprue D. So we've got a lot of tiny, tiny detail parts on here. I'm seeing a tiny, although I am seeing a tiny bit of flash, but it's only on the ejector tabs and stuff like as you can see here we've got some flash around there but there's nothing on the actual part so I take back what I was starting to say there's a jig there for folding some photo etch to cover that front light but beautifully done all very very crisp there's nothing I don't really know what I'm talking about here to show to talk about so 
I'll just show you the sprue and you can see the detail yourself. But it's all um it's all very nice. All very very crisp and lovely. I'm gonna put that one back in its bag for fear of it getting damaged. That's not the right bag, is it? put this one back in its bag because there's a lot of small parts and I've got a lot of sprues to get through. So this looks like our engine sprue so this would be sprue P in all your other Maz kits. So uh, cool yeah this is really nice. When I've seen reviews of this I thought oh they've gone a bit simple there because the engine block looks extremely simplified but I'm guessing they've gone for sort of what you can see rather than for what is really there. Maybe they couldn't even see when they did the research, they just left it flat. But this this looks kind of like an old, old tacky 124 scale car kit, you know, with the, when you, you have a motor stuck in the middle of there. But the cylinder head detail is beautiful, as is the injector banks in the middle. You can see on there, the cylinder head detail is gorgeous. Very, very nice indeed. Really crisp and sharp. Um, you've got the fans on the front there turbochargers it's all pretty simple I don't think you're going to see much of it I'm not sure if you can have access panels or whatever we'll see in a minute in the instructions but uh, you've got some exhaust pipes there ends are open but um, we can obviously do better than that if indeed that is the end I mean there's, there's an end there so that's an end there that's, that may be that may be a join that it may not be an end but uh, yes very, very pleased with my purchase, shall I say. So there's another one here. It's just Sprue City, isn't it? It just goes on and on and on. on. Down to seven minutes left on the camera. So here we go. Um, in fact, this can't be that short. I've been on an hour already. So here's the um, here's some lovely parts here. These are obviously going to be stiffener so something's going to go in there vertically coming out and facing you but you can see there we got all the bolt detail and, and the, the gusset detail and everything so very very nice indeed beautifully done more jigs here for folding photo etch frames that steering wheel but um yeah very very crisp very very nice Beautifully done. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the camera here. No, well, I'll carry on a little bit. No, I will stop the camera here um, and then start again because the film's running out. Okay, so there we go. I'd forgotten I'd done some video on the camera before and not downloaded it. So normally I start with a with a fresh sort of um, clean slate and it gives me about an hour and seven minutes. And I thought I'd been going for more than an hour. I hadn't. I'd done some more videoing. So here we are, we've got uh, Sprue B, and this is a lovely one. This is all our cab interior parts. If you remember, we looked at those cabs and we had them as, you know, solid shells. Well, shells, with, you know, with all the outer molded. But don't worry, you still get all the interior details. So we have all the panels here with the interior detail on them. As we can see, I'm sure there's going to be loads to be added to this. Um, we've got what looks like some piston motors from a steam train. <laughs> uh, and then we've got the interior of the backs the cabs and everything there and here we go again this looks like parts off a steam train doesn't it but it's probably part of the um, lifting mechanism and then we've got a lovely little instrument panel there which looks very nice indeed lots of molded on detail same here another one there and uh, some sort of towing eye or something there which is beautifully molded look at that in one piece really nicely done so um Yes, it's a very, very nice kit, this, isn't it? It's, um, it's very complete by the look of it. As complete as it can be, anyway. So we've got a couple of little sprues here. So we've got two, two small ones in a bag. So this is sprue L. So we'll just have a look at one of them, obviously. And we have some... Are they filler pipes? I remember seeing it said one one piece filler pipes, but these are obviously parts for the missile. Um, 
lots of detail on them very very sharply molded very sharply done with very crisp lines and everything some sort of hatch there maybe like a seat but beautifully done very very nicely done indeed and then we have here we have here we go a couple of sprues wrapped in bubble wrap which is always a nice touch from trumpeter I'm going to cut this tape rather than try and tear it off for fear of breaking the parts so this is the sort of packaging that other companies need to look into you know stop the parts rattling around in the box wrap your gentle parts your fragile parts in foam or whatever we've got three of these sprues so we can see here we've got lots of little grab handles and stuff we've got some lifting eyes there which are very nicely done and then we've got an air tank there, we've got some lever arms probably for the steering. And then we've got some supports there for the fenders and stuff. Some suspension links, little crosses, I'm sure they're going to be for seat mounts or something. And then we've got some hatches. That's the only downside with trumpeter kits, I would say. Um, looking at this, you do find out you, when you're building like an Airfix Hellcat, you know, all of the cockpit is on one sprue. All of the port wing is on one sprue, all of the starboard wing is on another sprue. With trumpeter kits, it seems tends to be. Oh, there's a little part there. Look. There's a part there which has come off, and I just swept that off onto my lap. Um, yeah, they tend to be, and it's from there. Look, here we go. So it's from there. It's missing. So I'm going to grab a bit of masking tape. With trumpeter kits, you tend to be. You know, you you're building up the engine, and it's Y27 for the cylinder head, and then you got. L56 for another part and then B22, C29, Why? <laughs> and I know that Paul Shaplin was doing his um, 48 scale U-boat and in the end he gave up, he, he got fed up with it because he's forever having to go back in the box and get one part off a sprue, part of another sprue, put it all away and then you do the next stage and you're getting all those parts out again and just getting one part off the sprue so that is a bit of a downside but um, isn't it amazing the one part we have got off the sprue and it's from the bubble wrapped bag. So there we are. So we'll get that put in there out of the way. Just like so. Here we go. So that can go over there. And then here we've got another double sprue. I've got a loose part. That's just an ejector tab. Like this kit's had a pretty tough journey over from China, it's been beat about a bit. But um, again, it looks like we've got some feet here for some, su some support feet by the look of it. There again, lovely, lovely molding. You can imagine that with a wash and a dry brush and some dirt and rust, gonna look lovely. Slide molded actuators there, some suspension knuckles there, some hubs. So, yeah, all in all. Beautifully, beautifully done. Very nice. You can see all the moulding on there. It's uh, all the detail. It's gorgeous. I haven't found anything to complain about yet. It's unusual for me, isn't it? So here we have, here we go. So we have two sprues in here, in one bag. But we've actually got four sprues the same. And this is going to be wheels and suspension and stuff like that. So we'll get this open, we'll have a look at one. Take this out of here carefully. We've got the, again, we've got the, the foam protection around both sprues. So again, I'm going to cut it rather than try and separate it. There we go, just like that. Right, so we will have a look and see what it's like. So, as I say, we've got four of these. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, they are gorgeous. Look at that. So, there's our wheels. Really, really nicely done. Very crisp molding. I know that some Russian company has made aftermarket wheels for these with flat spotted tyres. Uh, or weighted tyres and I, I'm i not convinced when you look at photographs of the real thing I don't see them with sunken tyres so 
you know, a lot of these people make these wheels with flat tyres and they, I don't think they always have them. It's the same with like World War II Jeeps and stuff. They never seem to have flatted tyres. So I don't know why people make them. But um, I know certainly with this kit, we've got vinyl tyres that we'll look at in a minute. And I personally don't like them. But, um, you know, I'd rather have vinyl tyres than have resin tyres that are weighted. Uh, I got the Meng Smirch tyres for my Meng kit. And um, they're actually too small in diameter. So well, well done, Meng. But um, here you can see we've got obviously wheels, wheel backs. Suspension mountings, uh, not sure what they are, but they look like something very detailed. We've got more knuckles here, We've got cross members for the chassis. This is the belly plates for the chassis. Drive shafts, nicely done. Uh, it looks like we've got some ends of some tanks here or something, some cylinders. And then we've got some more cylinders out, maybe shock absorbers. We've got the bottoms of the shock absorbers there if they go with them. Uh, I'll give you a close-up look around the sprue because it is all very, very nice indeed. Very crisp, very sharp, and beautifully moulded. Tiny handles on there, look. Very, very nice indeed. You can see the detail on those plates there with the bolts and everything. Very, very nice. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I can't remember now which side was milk was covered in foam. It was this side, wasn't it? So I'm going to pack this back up. Just like so. And then get it back in that bag. In fact, I won't do that on camera. I'll do that after. Right, so that's that. So we can move on now onto our final box. This is the end box. So we've got a sprue here, which is uh, little bits and bobs by the look of it. Looks like the big box that sits on the side of the missile. You can see there again slide moulded parts. These are probably for the launcher. And you've got that great big box on the side of the missile. I'm not sure what the box is for, but it's it's definitely there. And you've got some lifting eyes on there as well. So very, very nice. And we've got some little controls on there with controls and buttons and stuff. That's a lovely little sprue, again with lots of sharp detail on it. And then we have our tyres, so I won't get the tyres out. They're basically the same as any old trumpeter tyres. Um, they've got they don't appear to have any lettering on them, but they do have some treads that have it. I will get them out because we need to see, don't we? Let's have a look how good or bad these tyres are. Just imagine 16 resin wheels ain't going to be cheap. Let's just get one of these out and see what they're like. Ah, we do have some lettering on there. Yeah, I couldn't see through the plastic. So again, it's worth getting them out. You can see we've got direction arrows on there as well, which is cool. Um, but we have got see on there the tyre lettering seems to work really well really good and we've got all the uh, the ribs on there as well moulded on we've obviously got the tread done which is very nice this is the later style tread which is correct for this vehicle and then we've got the the, the moulded seam in the middle is very very thin it won't take much at all to get rid of that just a sort of a 1000 grit stick covered in white dust which is not good let's wipe that off One thousand grit sanding stick, and that's getting rid of that seam. The other thing you can try is put them in the freezer, and it hardens them up. It makes it a bit easier to sand off. <laughs> Another little tip I'm gonna I'll tell you about something I've tried. If you um, if you don't like these vinyl tires and you want to make them look a bit better, I found if you get some alcohol and a cotton bud, I wouldn't soak them in it, but get some IPA and a cotton bud and just wipe them over. They tend to go matte, and then spray them with where is it here it is spray them with mrp 173 tire rubber and this paint if you put on very very thinly seems to stick to them and not flake off or peel off or anything so that's something worth remembering i've tried it before and it works really really well so give that a go just obviously you know blotch it on put it on very very lightly get a bit of an uneven finish to them and it also gives them a very slight sheen as well 
but we'll just I'll just show you that it does work. If you get some IPA on a cotton bud, let's just prove that I'm not telling you to destroy your tires. Yeah, if you just get some IPA, you can wipe them over because they're covered in a release agent. I mean, I'm guessing you probably could wash them in soapy water, but they'd probably take forever to dry because they're hollow. But if you just do that, both sides, just wet them and, you know, bloody bloody blah. You can see it's taken the sheen away. But it also means the paint will stick a lot better. They still feel a little bit oily, actually. Probably best to sit them in some hot soapy water for a few days or for a few hours. Put those away in there. There we go. Sometimes they're a nightmare to get back in, aren't they? We'll wrap that back up like that and hopefully that will stay. So you've got two lots of those, so you get 16 tyres. So you do get a kit with some of your tyres. Um, and then here we've got the this is the end, this is the nose of the actual missile launcher itself. So if you want to do a sort of display, from what I've seen with these things, when they get ready to launch, this nose just dunk, just drops off. It falls off onto the ground. So you'd have to add some interior detail. I expect somebody will come up with some aftermarket for it. But so uh, we've got the tailpipe there, the tail end of the launcher, and then we've got the uh, the nose there, we've got a bit of a seam line to clean up. But Nothing much, seems to be in pretty good register. Bit of a door detail, whatever molded on there. But they don't sort of hinge down or anything, they just dunk, they just drop off, sit on the ground next to the next to the truck. So there you are. So that's that. Nice rib detail around there. That's lovely. And here we got we're getting towards the end now. Wow, here we've got our launch tube. This is very cleverly moulded. I'd love to see the tool that made these. Bloody hell, it must be huge. The finish in there is... Uh, if we could get finished, you can't see the gloss, can you? I can. The gloss in there, maybe if I get a light. If we could get a finish like that, inside our intakes on our jet fighters. I don't know if you can see it. If I put something up in there you may see the reflection. Here you go, you can see the reflection of my hand and everything in the rule. Put my hand in there, you can see there the reflection of my hand. It's beautiful, shiny finish in there. Look at it. Beautiful. Um, but yeah, they're moulded in one piece, so no horrible joins and everything. Now this kit's been thrown around in the truck by the look of it because all the all the ejector pin tabs have fallen off and most of them are led in the bottom of the box. But basically you've got ejector pin tabs all the way down the outsides here and we've got a seam to clean up but literally, I mean this is a 1000 grit sponge, I wouldn't normally do a seam with a sponge, but it's that small. Look at that. That's pretty much gone. That is some beautiful, beautiful moulding and so well in register, it's untrue. Really, really nicely done. I either all of that or I just got lucky, but that is beautiful. You can see we've got the detail there for that great big box to go on. But um, you can imagine that, that bit there is... That's 34 centimetres. And then that bit there is that way, Nigel. Twenty-two. So that's thirty. That's thirty-four. So that's fifty-six. So fifty-six centimeters. And then you've got the ends to go on as well. So that is what's that? That's um fifty. And that's forty. So what did we say it was? Fifty-six. Fifty-six centimeters. Sixty-one. Uh, 65 centimetres long. That is also huge. Imagine if you haven't displayed with it erect. <laughs> yeah, you have a very long erection in your room. You may have two if you're lucky. So anyway, there we go. Right, so we'll stuff the ends of those back into there. 
And then here, these are our final sprues, I believe. Yes, they, oh no, we've got some other bits and pieces to look at. So here, let's get this out of the way. Another couple of foam covered sprues. Another bit falling off. So we're going to put that back in that bag. And then we've got, here we have, I'm going to cut the tape. There we go. So we can cut the tape. So here we have two of these sprues. Again, we've got some lovely slide moulding, and that's the bit that was broken off on the other. It looks like a chock. Um, lovely tread plate detail on there. We've got some more cylinders, a door, and some lovely interior detail on the door with no ejector pin marks, which is nice. And the ladder, little shovel there. And you see lots of little handles and grab rails and bits and pieces, all tiny little bits and bobs. All done just to drive you crazy. Very nice indeed. So uh, there we go. No, I was right the first time, wasn't I? So I'll put that away in a second. In the meantime, I will show you all of the little bits and pieces of gubbings we have in here. So we have some photos. This is all the little pressed steel sort of fenders that go underneath the chassis. So you can see that's all nicely done with photo etch. We've got a grill there that's going to fold up into be a cover, a wire frame that covers the light on the roof. And then here we've got um, some more mesh grills and some plates. That might, that might be a drilling guide or something there. I'm not sure what that is, but there's uh, more basic plates and stuff. On your photo etch panel there and then we got two of these and these are bits and pieces of the of the assembly you've got some rings there which are going to go around tubes to denote flanges we've got another one there this is going to fold up around our headlights there's a rain grill going over that i think that's probably going to go over that where i showed you where their fan those fans were in the sides and um now that's very interesting 01082 135th SS 27th 2019. So did this kit get held up with all the um the palaver? Could have done, couldn't it? And then in here we have four little steel tubes for something rather very nicely done. So that's that. Right, let me get cleared up here and then we'll have a look through the instructions because that's the only thing we haven't done yet. So just before we have a look at the instructions, we'll have a look at the decals or decals, which are uh, very nicely done, as usual trumpeter style. We normally have the we, we normally we have the masks in here as well. No point in getting them out. They are masks. They are die cut pieces of paper. Um, <clears throat> so here we have. It looks like this is a correction because we've got twenty one and twenty two. We've got twenty one and twenty two here. So uh, let's have a look under here. Nice that they tape the paper on. And nice that they put it in the bottom of the box, face down, not face up, which is cool. Uh, so here we've got the, we've got our stars there. We have some uh, regiment symbols there. All looks to be nicely in register, fairly thin. We have some instrument panel details there, which are going to be quite adequate for what you're going to see inside here without the doors open and stuff. And then we've got serial numbers here, one to, 11 there, and then we've got 2 to 12 there. Um, we've got the 1 there, so for some reason they put that one over there, and we've got 12 over here. Uh, and then we've got 0 to 9 there, we've got a star there, a dot of some sort, and then we've got 0 to 9 there. So we've got 0 to 9 there in white, 0 to 9 there in white, we've got 2, 3, that one is obviously number one for those stars. I'm not sure what all this is here because these numbers here, this is, oh, that is number two. <laughs> so number one is decal number two. Number five is decal number six. Number 11 is decal number 12. So if I can catch it in the light, you'll see that. If I can catch it in the light, you may see that the, the actual numbers one to 11 have carry film on them, but the numbers 
two to twelve don't. So that's uh, that was. We got a little number plate there. So uh, not many decals for a kit of this size. When you think it's like, it's, you know, the size of a three fiftieth scale battleship. Um, not many decals. But then it's probably more decals than you'd get on a three fiftieth scale battleship. So there we are. Right. So that's the decals looked at. Then we have the colour callouts here, um, which are. Again, as I said earlier, this is one of the things I don't look about Trumpeter. They don't tell you where the vehicle's from, it's just green. Um, it could be from 2010, it could be from anywhere. Uh, it's just green. But again, that's, I guess that's Russia, isn't it? It's green. Um, I got the fire extinguishers on the front there, which are a different colour. I'm not sure if that is a rolled up leather thing there or if it's a fire extinguisher you've got our rear lights here which are different colors so other than green it's you know there's bits there and then this is the um, victory parade symbols here i think i think that's what they put on the victory parade didn't it? i don't sure they go into combat with that on there unless that is a new thing please tell me in the comments below um and then here we've got the um the, the sort of very light tan the green and the black camouflage which is beautiful uh, always looks nice on a model and uh, all the different colour callouts there. So it's calling up for the green in um, Mr. Hobby 303 uh, or Tamiya XF20. So seems a little unusual, seems a little light to me. XF20 is... Yeah, that's a little bit of a weird light green that one, isn't it? So light green, XF20. I think they mean XF61, I think. I'm not sure. Or XF81, is it? Um, but there we go. So let's have a look actually to see what colour 303 is. Right, 303, which is what they're calling up here, um, is basically uh, it's US Air Force 34102, which is like the green you see in the Euro camo scheme on A10, which I think is. It's probably more correct for a World War II period, but I got a feeling these later Russian vehicles are a lot darker. I've got here, I've got XF61 here and XF81. And you can see here they're both a lot darker than that green. And I think these darker greens, particularly this one, I think this is more appropriate for um, for a vehicle of this era. Please let me know in the comments below what you think, because I'm always always intrigued with Russian greens. There's, um, there's lots and lots of different opinions on them. Certainly, if we look at the picture on the box front, you can see here. I mean, that is certainly not like a light green colour that you'd see on a World War Two, you know, like on a on a T thirty four or something. You know, it's not that colour. So, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I'd be interested to know. So, um, right, let's have a look at these instructions. So, uh, a very thick book. We have. 46 steps, 40 pages, which seems not a lot for a kit of this size. Uh, so let's have a look. So we've got sprue callouts here going in. As per usual, you've got your photo etching, masks and decals, and tires and all sorts. We've just seen all that. So starting off with the chassis, building up one chassis rail with the, the plate screw underneath to support the differentials. Obviously you have to make sure they're all nice and square. But we probably want to do a dummy build of the chassis with tape to know that they're going to be square or on an angle or whatever because we don't know when you look down the chassis at the end. Generally these mass chassis are like that. Um, but you want to make sure you get them in the right orientation. If they're all over the place, your chassis is never going to go together square. Uh, here we've got some, some of the... Um, this is going to be the pivoting ramp for the actual launcher at the back. So that's going in straight away. There's that lovely little towing eye thing we saw. And then here we're building up our differentials. So you're making two of those, four of those. Oh, so they're, I thought they were plates for it to um, sit on, but they're not. They're actually part of the differential transfer gearbox system, whatever. As you can see here, this is one of the nice things about Meng. Meng would tell you what all these parts are. Um, obviously, these are drive shafts. These are differentials. And then the plates in between. It looks like they're dropping. It looks like they're dropping the gear down. So you, get, so you get the prop shafts going higher up and then dropping down into the um, into the differentials. So they're taking power in and then dropping it down. They're probably a reduction gear. So there we go. I doubt there's much need, much call for this to go very fast. Um, and then we've got a transfer box there. Looks like we've got the main gear box there. 
um, and then we're building up. Yeah, that's that main gearbox there being built up by the look of it. And then we've got outriggers or cross members going into the chassis there. I've got loads of them, seven of those. Make sure they're all nice and square, blimey. And um, in fact, I would suggest, probably if you can, is to fit the two end ones, tape the ends of the chassis together and see if you can drop those other in and then glue it all together while it's all just taped. Because if you get one wrong and you start to get a twist in the chassis, you'll, you'll be buggered. And with the chassis as long as this, I don't know, I guess we're going to have to get some lengths of steel out of the garage to make sure it's all nice and straight. Um, because obviously here, 16 wheels, that's 16 wheels to make sure they're all touching the ground and they're all straight and then are steered like, you know, you don't want them like this, you don't want them like that, you don't want them like that, you don't want them not touching the ground, oh jeez, nightmare. So anyway, and then here's the other side of the pivoting system going on, we've got some actuator there for the pivoting system by the look of it, and then we're going to bring the two chassis halves together, I thought we'd just done that. Nope, this is the other half of the chassis, so be very careful. You end up with all this in here, and if you've got misalignment, you're going to have problems. So maybe I will do a video on how I build the chassis, just as a little sort of help for people who want to do stuff like this, because I know a lot of people do struggle with getting these chassis square. Um, and then we're going to fit all the outer suspension pivots on onto both sides. So it's telling you here both sides, and they're going to go on. And then you've got the suspension units going together. That's all going to go in there. Again, we need to make sure it's all level and straight. Oh, and then we're leaving the chassis behind and going to the engine. I would omit that, omit that, and get straight into this and get all your suspension in, if you can. Yeah, I don't think the engine is going to prevent any of that being fitted. Yeah. Um, the other thing is then, when you invert the chassis, you're not going to be sitting the chassis on top of your engine with all those fragile parts on it. So I would recommend continuing with the build of the chassis and then build the engine up. Anyway, got the engine halves going together there, flange going around the sump. That's an unusual way of doing it, isn't it? They've got a ring going around the block to depict the sump. Uh, got fuel filters there, or oil filters maybe. Got some hoses and the cylinder heads going on. We've got the... Um, the bell housing plate there or the flywheel cover and we've got the manifolds going on there with the turbos and then dropping that in and then we've got some PE okay yeah we've got some PE plates going to cover the exhaust manifolds and then we've got some PE bolt heads to go on as well so that's nice there's a fuel filter or oil filter or something there and then we've got the flanges on the ends of the pop shafts molded separately so that's all going to look lovely and detailed and then it's showing you here, down here, you've got the alignment, showing you how to line the drive shafts up once you've fitted them and everything. So that's all nice. Then we're going to go on to working on our uprights. So we're going to build our uprights up together. We've got that, remember we saw those photo etch rings, they're going to go on there. And then we've got all our wishbone arms going in together. Again, we need to make sure this is all vertical, all level. You know, yeah. This is like an engineering... I'm an engineer, this is an engineer's dream, I'm going to really enjoy building this. Um, and then we've got some um, oxygen tanks or air tanks going in there, there's three of the smaller ones and then two of the bigger ones. And then we've got some steering linkages going in. Be careful here because it's not telling you not to glue anything, so I guess if you want your steering working, you may be able to get that working if all these parts are separate. We shall see. Um, more steering parts going in there. And then it looks like all the chassis and suspension there it's showing us is basically finished. So lots and lots of parts. And then we're going to add some little eyes and stuff into here. We've got a panel going in there. And then we're going to work on the front bumper. So we've got the front bumper going together with the headlights and the side lights. We need to make sure we get everything painted silver and everything. We've got a big towing eye going in the front. We've got some framework going around there. I'm not sure if that's a rail for, is that a rail for holding on to? or a bump bar or something like that and then we've got this rear part here this looks like, this looks like the back of a um, scud launcher doesn't it but it looks like this is a, a, a big, big beam going across the chassis that you're going to have the hydraulic rams in to, to get the wheels off the ground for launching um, then we've got these parts here I think this is part of the steering gear isn't it I think is that part of the steering gear where is it going on no it's a tank that's going across the middle 
the steering gear normally sticks out down here. Um, front bumpers going on, that rear big rear member is going on there, and then we've got some outriggers going in, more outriggers going together there, and then they're all going to go on to support the framework and the uh, fenders and everything. And then we're going to start adding these boxes. This is just going to be now a series of boxes going down here. It's going to be like a load of train carriages on a straight piece of track, as you can see. Just assemble them all up. Photo etch, handrails, plonk it on. Photo etch, handrails, plonk it on. And that's how it's going to go all the way through there. You see more boxes to be built up, more boxes to be built up. Lots and lots of stuff. And then we end up with all this here. And all we've got then is our cab fronts to go on. This unit here, I'm not sure what this is. This looks like it may be some kind of levelling device. I'm not sure if it's just a toolbox or what. But I know the SS25 has that great big cylinder that sort of pumps down and, and lifts the truck up to level everything up for the, uh, for the launch. So here we're going to build up our um, seats and everything. If you notice, we've got some nice colour call-outs, which is unusual to see in this, these days with models we've been making lately. So we've got some nice colour call-outs and we have interior panels here going into all those shells for the actual uh, for the actual cabs going on the front. It's telling us to colour, paint the inside of these, this H391. I don't use that, I mix my own and here it is. This is my own Russian interior green for trucks and stuff. And this is 4 times x 2 Tamiya, 1 times x 14 Tamiya and 1 times x 28 Tamiya. And that ends up as a gloss paint, which is great because you can paint it on and then you can do your washes and stuff and then flat coat it afterwards. But that's the sort of colour you're after. It's that sort of greeny colour. I, th I find the 391 is a little too greeny little too leafy green so I tend to tone mine down a little bit because um, remember when you're looking inside there it's all going to darken up because you're in an enclosed space so um, there we go so there's this little framework going on the bottom of the seat there um, and obviously then we've got that here don't we sorry and then we've got just a seat going in there there's a simple panel I don't know what all this is in here if anybody knows please tell me what this guy sat in that little cab on the right hand side does I'd love to know so, um, adding all the framework to support it, fire extinguishers going on the front, and then we've got some hatch detail in the top, some do door going on the side, you've got all the interior handles on the doors, which is a nice touch, and it looks like we might get an armour plate as well on there. Um, and then we've got the, the seats going in here, into the floor for the main driver's cab, we've got the steering gear going in the bottom by the look of it, and then we've got, here's the side panels going in, we've got handles and stuff going on, We've got a window frame going in, and then that's all going to drop into there. Then we've got the other side going together, that's going to drop into there. It's not like the uh, Skirt and all the others, like the um, 543 with all the oxygen tanks and everything in there. It's just a plain, simple cab. Um, we've got PE dobs here for the actual instrument panel, which is nice. And there's those decals being put on there, as we talked about earlier. Another decal there, and we've got a PE grab rail gun so that's all going to look really really nice in there um maybe good enough each other door opens i couldn't see any seat belts i'm not sure if they wore seat belts in these or not i mean they went so slow they probably didn't need them but um not sure um and then we've got the the hatches going in the top there and then running a bit of detail onto the side adding the windscreen wiper we've got some lifting eyes going in the roof it's all very nice all where you can streak from and chip and god knows what uh, doors going together again with all the interior detail and then adding those in and then we've got this outrigger there which is going to go into the chassis with probably the hydraulic supports to support the cab. Step ladder going up the side and then we're going to make up this frame using that PE, to make up the PE frame using that tool and then whack that over that light on the top. Chuck the two cabs on and then we're done and it's telling you where to put the die cut masks. Then we got all these PE mudguards, remember I showed you those on the PE sheet. Steering gear, hallelujah, finally Trumpeter have put steering gear in the front where they've always been missing out of them, out of all the other kits. And then we've got mud flaps going in here, and usually they're plastic and not uh, photo etch. All those photo etch panels going in there, telling you how to bend them. And there we go. And then more and more detailed greeblies and bits and pieces going on. We've got the foot, feet here for the jacks. Uh, we've got the jacks going in, you can have them extended or folded I'm sure. Not sure if we got them extended or folded. 
but it's showing them here in their folded state. And then we've got wheels and tyres going on. No um, poly caps in here, it's actually um, glued on caps, so you might want to have your wheels just fixed solid. I would, the slightest amount of play in those and you're going to end up with your wheels being all horrible. You want them all perfectly in line. And if I do do a video, I'll show you how I manage that. Um, and then we've got a ladder going on the back here. We've got some more greeblies and pieces going on here. And then here's another little assembly there for that fold up step going on the back. More, just when you think you're all done, more bits and pieces going on here. Not sure what all this is. Looks like a load of drive shafts for something or other. And then we've got some framework to be built up in here, adding all this detail onto the back. We've got some shovels going on there, tools. I'm not sure what that box there is for. It's like a blooming um, outhouse <laughs> or something. And then we've got another P uh, frame being made over a jig there for our headlights. More bits and pieces of greeblies. And uh, there we go. We've got intakes there and mesh, mesh grills going onto the intake for the engine, which is going to cover it up. I'm guessing you can just drop that on loosely and then remove it to show the inside of the engine. And then that's all that done and we're on to the actual launcher itself. So we've got those round parts going around. We're building up the uh, the base there. We've got the conduit going down the sides that we saw in that big second sprue I showed you. And then we're adding the big foot on there. And then no doubt we're going to turn it over and add the big nose onto the other end. We've got a, what looks like a hinge there, but I'm sure they just fall off. Well, they're on the SS25, maybe the SS27, it hinges back. I have to have a look. Um, some pipe work going in, some greeblies, some detail going on the sides there. Um, I'm sure it said on the side of the box, one piece pipes. I'm sure it said that. So where did I see that? It was on here, wasn't it? It was on the. Um, There we go. Oh, separately moulded fueling pipes. Yeah, they're in two pieces. They're not one piece. So basically they're saying they're not moulded in solidly. So they're, you've got to make them up and then just put them on the sides there. And then we've got these bits here. I'm, I'm assuming they're going to be walkways to walk up. I, I don't know. I don't know what they are. And then that great big box going on the side there. I'm guessing that's some sort of control unit. And then over the page. Fitting that onto the actual launch rails, we've got the launcher there, so that's going to sit down in those slots in there. And then we've got some grab handles, so we've got to fold those up at a PE and put them all down the side there, or ladder steps are they? And then we're adding that onto the launcher, and we're going to decide whether we want it open or closed. So we've got this piece here. Okay, right, so we're making this up. So you've got the actual hydraulic unit there, which is lifting up the actual launcher itself. And we're making that up. So it looks like we can actually have it positionable. So they're saying no cement. So it looks like you can have it all pivoting. So um, you have a, something you can play with. So you can erect your tool as of when you want to. And then let it down again when you're finished. So there we go. Travel mode show. Combat mode show. So there we are. So I didn't see anything in there about having options of where the, the feet would go, so you could have a proper launch display with the feet down and everything. But um, they're certainly in here, and they're certainly multi-part units. Um, I'm guessing you could just extend that down. Uh, that's the actual unit there, that's your hydraulic ram. So I'm guessing you could extend that with a piece of brass rod or something, or a piece of plastic rod, and extend it down. I don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. But uh, there we go. All in all, quite the package. As I say, £186 I paid for this from China all in. Um, 250 quid, I think, is the UK retail price. So, you know, you make your own mind up. If you are going to Telford, you may well... Sorry, people go mad if I say go to Telford. If you're going to the IPMS scale model show, it happens to be in Telford, um, then you'll uh, see it there. You may well see it there. Hopefully you see one built. Um, but you may well see it on sale there. Maybe a better price, 150 quid or something. However, I doubt it because these days the kit manufacturers, prices are going up. The 
distributors that bring them into the country have to make their money and then you obviously your shop that's selling has to make their bit so by the time you've done all that you know you end up paying the price so that's been a review of that as i said at the beginning of the video not the most appropriate thing to be looking at at the moment um but you know if you think of it it's a plastic model of a piece of machinery that's been around for you know 15 20 years and if I'd done it last year, no one would have thought a word of it. Thought any of it. And as I said at the beginning, any comments about Russia, about war or anything like that, um, I just, I'll delete them or not put them up or whatever. Not because I don't care about your opinion, not because I'm not interested in what you've got to say, not because I'm not interested in what you think is wrong or right. Everything that's going on, I have my own opinion on. But I don't want to get into a political banter and I don't want to get pulled up by YouTube for comments about things that I didn't even talk about. So that's basically why I'm taking that, that slant on it. Um, I remember I did some stuff before about Ukrainian stuff and I had a load of slander over that. So um, basically anything that anybody puts up now, I just won't, won't print. OK, so thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I um, hope it's made you want to go and get one. You know, if you want a centrepiece and you don't want to go to the Dora, then, you know, this thing is absolutely bloody huge. It's almost the size of an A2 modelling mat, so it's going to be a hell of a kit when it's built. So I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.